Good morning, everybody. Happy Palm Sunday. Yay. All right. We're sorting our tech issues, but that's all right. We will get there. We've got time. Um, this is the Sunday where we normally start outdoors, but it's chilly. So we're starting inside, and then those of us who can and are willing will process outside. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to stay in here and bless our palms the piece we would normally start doing outside, we will do it in here, this first piece. And then once we have blessed the palms, we will bundle up, we will follow the cross, and our cruci her torch bearers who are not gonna carry their torches outside, because it's a long walk and they're heavy. Um, so they will instead wave palms with us and we will follow them and the choir will be right behind our crucifer and our torch bearers or our palm bearers for the procession. Uh, anybody who wants to grab a musical instrument on the way out is welcome to. We're gonna go out the chapel door and we're gonna go through the parking lot, and we're gonna go up the sidewalk on the Deerfield Road side of the building, and we're gonna go up the sidewalk on the Wilmot Road side of the building, and we're gonna come back in, what is the front door of the church, but it's the back door of the church. And then we will come back in, and the procession will proceed down the aisle, and you will proceed to your seats, and we will sing all glory, laud, and honor, as we do on Palm Sunday, because I think it's written somewhere since the beginning of time that that's what you must sing. And so we will sing it, um, and you will note on page two of your bulletin, uh, there is all glory, laud, and honor, all of the verses. Once everybody is in and settled, whether or not we have sung the last verse or, or not, um, we will pause. I will say the collect that then switches us from the joy of the palms, the joy of the parade, the joy of the welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem, our liturgy switches to passion, right? So I'll say the, the collect that takes us in a whiplash sort of way from Palm Sunday to Passion Sunday, and then we will sing the final verse, which the astute among you will note is not actually all glory, laud, and honor, but is instead, O sacred head sore wounded, sung to the tune of all glory, laud, and honor. See how we did that? <laughs> Uh, and so that will shift us into the Passion Sunday, and then we will proceed apace as normal, except for the reading of the Passion, which is not normal, but is super cool and important. Got it? Clear as mud? All right. So we will parade. We will share our joy with the world uh, once we begin. But we will begin, as we always do, with a little bit of quiet. So I'm going to invite those of you who are about to put your feet on the ground to center yourself in God's creation and remember that you are a beloved part of that creation. In just a minute, I'm gonna invite Abby, who is our bell ringer for the day, to ring our bell, to bring us into a moment of sacred silence. And we will be still and know that God is God and we are not and give thanks for that. And then Abby will ring the bell a second time to bring us out of our sacred silence, at which point we will stand up and we will begin our Liturgy of the Palms, which is done all standing. I don't know why, but that's what the rubrics say, and so we'll do it. <laughs> and so let us breathe and know that God is God and we are not, and give thanks for that. Please stand as you're able. <laughs> Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts, whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
After telling a parable to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter into it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus. And after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be. The Lord be with you. Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. I invite you to hold up your palms. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the way that leads to everlasting life, who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ.
Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning, he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. 
I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Please read Psalm 31 responsibly. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sorrow. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. I am useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your grace to shine upon your servant and in your loving kindness save me. A reading from the letter to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. The assembly of the elders of the people rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to 
to accuse him of saying, We come this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? If you say so, or, um, you say so. I find no basis for an accusation against this man. He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even into this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was Galilean, and when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in, De in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been waiting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see if he performed some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and scribes stood by, Philip accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with comfort and mocked him. Then he, <coughs> he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Away with this fellow. Release for us. <coughs> this was a man who has been put in prison for an instruction <coughs> that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, <coughs> And a third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one they had, who had been put in prison for interstiction and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him. And among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that are never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of There was also an inscription over him, This is the King of the Jews. 
one of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I condemn my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. We are not okay. This is what I keep hearing from my friends, from my family, from people I talk to. This is what I see in my inbox, in the blog posts, in the articles in the newspaper. This is what I see when I look at the news. We are not okay. The world is not okay. Did you know that in 2020, global incident, incidences of certified Chronic anxiety and chronic depression increased by 25 or 30 percent, depending on which metric you use. 25 to 30 percent increase in documented anxiety and depression worldwide with a concentration on young people. Our young people are not okay. Our world is not okay. And it is okay to acknowledge that. It's okay to say, I'm not okay. It's okay to say, this is not okay. The world is not okay. It doesn't make us defeatist. It doesn't make us less Christian. If you listen to the scriptures, Jesus tells us over and over again, things aren't going to be okay. The world is not okay. Acknowledging this just acknowledges the truth of the situation and gives us an opportunity to do something about it because the world doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that there should be wars and famine and killing and persecution and discrimination and bullying and all of the things. That doesn't make sense. And we don't wanna stay in that state always. We don't wanna dwell on it always, but it's important to acknowledge it because we all have hard times. And if we pretend we don't, then the people around us feel weird and odd and excluded when they have hard times. Everybody has hard times. It's okay not to be okay. And if ever there was a time that it's okay not to be okay, it's Holy Week. Right? I mean, we have just experienced the incredible whiplash of what Holy Week holds for us, right? The glory, laud, and honor of proclaiming Jesus walking into Jerusalem. I mean, imagine crowds of thousands and tens of thousands lining the streets with these palms. The very same kind of feel in their hands that we had today. The same smell of the palm. Remember from last week, the smell of the nard wafting to us. The dust coming up. The joy and exultation because this is finally it. We're going to be okay. This man riding in on this colt is going to make us okay. He is going to overthrow this government, and it's going to be great, right? It's going to be so great, I'm taking the only cloak I have and throwing it down for him to walk on with his horse. Right? I'm going to wear horse hooves on my back because it's going to be okay, right? And then we walk in the door, and we're talking about the passion. We're reading about Jesus' death and resurrection. This week, y'all, 
carries the fullness of human emotion and experience. From the joy and the exultation and the wonderfulness of creation and life and the hope to violence and destruction and war and famine and discrimination and bullying and pain and death and mourning and despair. Anything we can feel, anything we can go through, anything our bodies can hold is contained within this week. And that's why we do it. Right? That's why we do this week. There's a Latin American proverb that says, the road is made by walking. And so we walk. And so we walk Holy Week. Because when we walk Holy Week, when we journey this week, it enables us, it prepares us, it builds that spiritual muscle memory that we need to walk the journey of life, to go through all of these things that we will go through over and over again in life. We need to do this week so that we remember when the world falls out but from underneath us, God bless you, when we are not okay, this week holds us. Because we do this week, year in and year out, because we go through this experience, because we journey and make this road, we can survive the fullness of what life throws at us. And that starts today with Palm Sunday and journeys us through the week with that sharp justic position. We're supposed to be confused. We're supposed to be thrown off kilter so that we can remember when life throws us off kilter that we, this is how we anchor ourselves. This is where we stake our hope that this reminds us it will be okay. It won't always be this way. This week is hard because it does bring all of that yuck that we experience to the surface because every emotion is on display. All of the emotions and experiences we have within us are raised to the surface and we have to deal with them. And that's not any fun. But this week holds it. God creates space for this. God can handle it and God can hold it and can hold us together in everything we bring to this week so that collectively we can continue to build that spiritual muscle memory. And we do it together. We start this week together, parading together like silly humans around a building in something that seems to make no sense. But taking the step helps us build the road. Taking the step helps us start this journey of Holy Week, and we do it together. In the book, Burnout, The Secret to Unlocking the Stress Cycle, Emily and Amelia Nagoski report on an emerging area of neuroscience that is fascinating. It's a two-person neuroscience. So this talks about how we, interacting together, influence each other's bodies. Y'all, this is amazing, right? So our brain, our heart, and our respiratory systems co-regulate when we are together. This is being proven scientifically, and it's fascinating. So if people are watching a movie together, they did research on people watching movies and put all the electrodes on their heads, right? Their brain's emotional responses start synchronizing, which leads me to believe if people are in a liturgy service together, their brain's emotional responses start synchronizing. Look, if we put diodes on all of our heads, we would start synchronizing, right? Our emotions would be synchronizing. People who share physical space, their heartbeats start regulating together. So our heartbeats are starting to regulate without us even knowing it. Our bodies are syncing up. When we're together with other people, we mirror facial expressions. We know this from speech, being taught about speech. We mirror facial expressions. We uh, mirror Uh, pitches in voice, right? And what we know that happens, the science tells us that when we mirror the facial expressions, when we mirror pitches and voices, that the emotions that those carry also mirror within us, right? And all of this happens without any conscious effort on our part. You know why? Because this is how we were created. We were created to be together, to help each other through life, to carry each other to Jesus, and through all of the challenges of life. We weren't created to be alone. We weren't created to be not okay alone. We were created to be not okay together and to help each other get to okay 
through remembering that it is Jesus that does that work for us. Who we are with and what we do together matters because it influences our whole selves. And so when we choose to do things like come together to worship, like choose to physically be together so that we can go through Holy Week together, to go through these experiences of emotion of what God brings to us together, we remind each other physically, the energy in our bodies is reminded that we are going to be okay. Because the Paschal mystery, which is the fancy churchy word for what happens, that miracle that happens in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, that holds all of the key to how we are going to be okay. But we can't realize the truth of that unless we go through the fullness of it together. And so we're preparing. We've started today to walk this journey of faith to create that road to wellness together, to create that road to wholeness and fullness of living a life of faith and community together. Holy Week is not a solo activity. It's made to be born alone. As Jesus walked that road, he started with the disciples with a meal. He went to the garden with the disciples. Even when he was praying alone, they were around him. When he was carried away, he was with people. Together they mourned and ran away. Together the women stood at the foot of the cross. We are made to do this journey together. And this year we're not just doing it as the St. G's worshiping community. We're expanding that reach because that is important. So together, we will journey with St. Elizabeth and Glencoe, St. Lawrence and Libertyville and Trinity with Highland Park. We will walk and make these roads together day by day with Compline on Monday and Tuesday, with Tenebrae on Wednesday at St. Elizabeth's, with Monday Thursday at St. Lawrence and Libertyville and the foot washing where we will surely co-regulate because we are washing each other's feet. And on Friday, with Good Friday at Trinity, and back here on Saturday for the Easter Vigil, where we will baptize one baby baby girl and one adult woman who wants to become a part of our faith and community. Together, we will remind each other that it's going to be okay. That it's okay not to be okay. Because you don't have to do it alone. And it's going to be okay because Jesus. Because death and resurrection brings everlasting life. And together we are built in community. So let's take the steps. Let's walk the road. Let's build the muscle memory to remember that together we will be okay. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, holy and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Claiming the one who reigns from the cross, let us lift up the needs of the church and the world, praying. Hear us and have mercy. For those preparing for baptism, especially Whitney and Allison, that you may bestow upon them the blessing of your peace and grace, we pray. Hear us and have mercy. That the baptized may be living signs of faithfulness to the witness of God's suffering servant, we pray. Hear us and have mercy. That the nations may welcome the peace of the one who comes in the name of the Lord, we pray. That the poor may find hope in the Son of David and joy at his triumphant coming, we pray. That we who embrace Jesus as ruler may be ready to accept the cross from which he reigns, we pray. that our joy may be multiplied as we feast on the wonders of your creation. We invite those online to type your prayers of gratitude into the chat and they'll be read aloud. Today we give thanks for the opportunity to worship on site together, the technology that allows our community to be together online, Melissa Orsi and Mara who are expecting. The on-site congregation gives thanks today for being on site. Uh, <laughs> The online congregation today give thanks for? For visits with friends, for Carol and Dan Dunton's wedding anniversary, for safe travels for my mom, <laughs> for recovery, and for the healing of Mary. We pray. Hear us and have mercy. That the sick may be comforted by the one who bears all our pain, including those we now name. We invite those online to type your prayers for the sick, sad, lonely, and afraid into the chat, and they'll be read aloud. Today we pray for those in our parish prayer list, including Dave Ryan and family, Kyan, Nick Pappas, Patrick Burke, Paula Clark, Steve Lawless, Susie and John Dutcher and family, the family of Phoebe Caldwell, Donna Shelton, who is receiving a kidney today. <laughs> Dean, Terry, well, I should mention the people who are in the building. I'm praying for Dean, Terry, Christy, Carlene, Bonnie, Sue, Matthew, Grant, Sloan, Joshua, Jean, Teresa, Barbara, Carol, Michelle, and Zach. Vera and Ray, Patrick and Monica, and John. The online congregation today offers prayers for? For Rick, who is in hospital, for Joy Ralph, for Bob, Deb, Dabney, and Vicki, for the Lee family, for Jean and Donna, and for Stephanie, who is ill. We pray. Hear us and have mercy. That our beloved dead may stand vindicated in the eternal faithfulness of the Most High, especially those we now name. We invite those online to type your prayers for the dead into the chat and they will be read aloud. Today we pray for, we pray for those on our parish prayer list, including Susie Dutcher's mother, Patricia Waltamath, Dave Ryan's mother, Shirley Ryan, and Donna Shelton's kidney donor. The on-site congregation today prays for Ryan, Neva, and those killed in Ukraine. 
The online congregation craves today for? For Jennifer, for Carl, for Jim, for Chris, for Charles, Betty Danny, Bill, and David. We pray. Hear us, Hear us, God, our help. Give us courage to share Christ's cross, that we may also share the life it brings. This we ask in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, Peace, everyone. Peace, Peace, Peace to you all. Peace. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, you also. Peace, Mary. Peace, everybody. Do we have anybody who's celebrating a birthday or an anniversary or traveling this week for whom we can pray? Mm -hmm. Birthdays, anniversaries, travelers, birthdays, anniversaries. Travelers. Birthday sisters. <laughs> Catherine, do we have any online birthdays? Uh, my mom and Lee Stewart are travelers. Travelers, all right. Yes. But no other birthdays. So we will pray for Sybil and Sally who celebrate. Do y'all have the same birthday? Do you have the same birthday? No. But same week. All right. Then we will pray for Sybil and Sally. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on Sybil and Sally as they begin a new year. May they continue to grow in wisdom and grace and understanding, and may they grow to love you more and more. May all the days of their lives be filled with your grace and peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Happy birthday, Amen. ladies. Thank you. We have no anniversary. We, there was an anniversary in the prayers. Carol and Dan didn't let us pray for their anniversary. Holy God, we lift up Carol and Dan as they celebrate the anniversary of their entering into the sacrament with you of marriage. Continue to bless them and strengthen them. May they grow to love each other more as they love you more. And may their union all the days of their life shine your love to this hurt and broken world. Amen. Happy anniversary, Dentons. And we have two travelers. Debbie. Debbie, Lee, and Emma, and David, and Curtis, and Louisa are all traveling. Let us pray for them. Holy God, surround these, your travelers, with your angels and keep them safe. May their travels bring them rest and recreation. May they see you in new and wondrous ways in the people and experiences they encounter. And above all, bring them back safely, that they may continue to serve you as the people you have called them to be in this world. Amen. Safe travels, everybody. And we are not passing a plate today, uh, but we do have baskets at each of the entrances. And so we invite you, in fact, we encourage you to give as generously as you can in those baskets. You can also go online to stgschurch.org. And in the upper right-hand corner is an option to donate. And we invite you to donate as you can. You can donate to our operating fund, which we encourage you to do. So we can continue to, to be the worshiping community that we are and serve people and help people live lives of faith in this world. Um, you can also give to the Rector's Discretionary Fund, which goes to help people with housing insecurity almost exclusively. You can give to the food banks, where we match dollar for dollar all contributions through our Faith and Action Fund. And you can also give to our Refugee Resettlement Fund, because we are joining with our partner congregations to bring a refugee family and help them find housing. And so that fund is now available for gifting. I invite you, beloved, to walk in love. As Christ first loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only child, born of Mary, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now is work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate Christ's death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our ancestors, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of our Savior Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, almighty God, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved children of God.
standing as you are able. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your child and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now kneeling as you're able, bow down before the Lord. Hear us, God, our help. Give us courage to share Christ's cross, that we may also share in the life it brings. This we ask in Jesus' name, who is Lord forever and ever. A couple of quick announcements before the dismissal. Uh, donations towards our Easter worship are still open, but the deadline is Wednesday. This Wednesday is the deadline. So if you want to make donations towards Easter worship, you can do that by grabbing one of the envelopes at one of the entrances and putting money inside it and listing what you want done. You can give it any time to make donations to the church as a special Easter offering, which is also an option. Did you know this? Um, but for special Easter worship, those are due by Wednesday. College care packages. Money is due by Easter Day. Um, we are buying all of the stuff together so we don't get duplications and we know about some dietary restrictions. Uh, and then we will pack and ship the boxes the Sunday after Easter, right after church, so we can send packages to all the college students right before exams. They love this. 
Um, blood drive today in Founders Hall. If you didn't sign up, you can still give blood. They do take walk-ins, so if you can give blood, we encourage you to walk right over there and do so. What better day than Passion Sunday to give blood? It's a sense of humor that not everybody appreciates. <laughs> Okay, um, Holy Week, it's coming. If you want to carpool and drive with to St. Elizabeth's on Wednesday, to St. Lawrence on Thursday, or to Trinity on Friday, let Charlene know. We're coordinating carpools. I think we're meeting around six, but you need to contact Charlene because if nobody's coming, we won't wait for you. But if you're coming, we will. So let us know if you want to carpool to the Holy Week services. And you know what they are. They are listed in your bulletin. And if you can't get there in person, show up online. Let's do this together, y'all. And if you want to fold your palms into crosses, which is a beloved tradition of Palm Sunday, we just didn't get around to this year before Holy Week, because it happens, y'all. Um, did I mention we're not okay? Um, there are notes in your Holy Week devotional booklet, which is outstanding, that Casey put together for us. The front page is how to fold the palms into crosses if you want to venture on your own. I also photocopied some of them and put them on the table right outside this door here if you want to venture into that on your own doing. And now, beloved... I invite you to go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.